Welcome back friends. Um, today I want to show you a kind of a fun project just real quick. Um, I'm going to print with vegetables and I have some different bottoms of vegetables here that I have cut when I'm cooking and save them in the refrigerator for today in particular and um, I want to print with acrylic on some water media paper. Now the trick to doing this really well is to have a little bit of padding underneath so Put a few pieces of paper underneath and underneath the paper that you want to use. And make sure you're using a water media paper with this so it doesn't crumple on you. Um, I'm using tube paints, but you can use liquid acrylics if you prefer. Um, this is a lettuce here, and I'm just going to print these out so you can see what they print. But you can, you know, choose to make an arrangement. Um, because I cut this, what, a couple days ago. Uh, maybe not that long ago, but I want to make sure that it's pretty flat, so I don't want there to be too much edge on there on any of these. That's a lettuce. Um, this one is a celery, and it's fairly flat. I'm going to leave it alone. Another celery. Celeries make really wonderful little roses. You can see what that's going to do. This is a bok choy, which is kind of cool. It looks like a, a rose or a um, know, maybe a peony or something. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe not. And I'm going to Oh, I'm going to cut that. Do keep in mind that with some of these, the closer you cut it to the stem, the less um, variance in the petals of the flower that you're going to make. So, hope I cut that one nice and flat. Easier to do when you are at a cutting block than on your, on your art table. Um, this one I cut several days ago. Now this is a Napa cabbage. And as you can see, when you cut them, they continue to grow. So this would have been a really cool peony, say, or something. But it really has um, continued to grow, and so now I'm going to get so I can take it down and, and not totally lose my print. It may be a little bit. This will be a good example of if you cut it too close to the, um, to the base, you won't get enough holes in there to make it look like anything. It'll just look like a block of color. Um, and lettuce, of course, and um, and a bottom of a pepper. I'm not going to mess with this too much um, because if I do, it's just going to get too small. But it should make an interesting flower shape. Get rid of my choppings here and move these critters over. I'm bring over my paint now. You can use a roller if you prefer. Um, I don't have a whole bunch of brayers or I probably would opt for that, but I don't like cleaning brayers in between. So um, you could use a card, like a credit card or a large flat palette knife like this one, if you like. Um, I was just using my regular palette knife with this to mix my colors and then um, was spreading them out, which isn't that easy to do very evenly, but you want a little bit of thickness in your paint. And I have sprayed them because they are acrylic. They will dry quickly. Um, trying to keep them damp because I want to use them. Spraying them down with a spray bottle. And then just um, flattening out the paint enough that I will be able to print in it. So let's get started. Here is a uh, the bottom of a celery. And I'm pulling on it a little bit because I want it to have a little bit more. If you pull too hard, you pull it apart. But I want it to have a little bit more definition in there. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with the brightest color on the, on the palette. And I'm squishing it around because I want ink to distribute everywhere. And because I know that cutting them on my drawing board here means that they're not completely flat across. Um, I'm rocking them a little bit to make sure I ink up really well. Okay. And I'm going to bring it over here and show you. And I'm just going to do a line of these instead of making a bouquet. Um, you could plan, just remember when you're doing that, you want varying sizes as well. So you don't want all your flowers to be exactly the same size. Okay, I'm pressing down. Remember that padding is super important. You could use a magazine as well. Pressing hard. And then let's lift up. Oh, I don't have enough padding underneath. When I see something like that, I know that it could, 
I could stand to have a little bit more something underneath there to um, give me a little bit of just a little bit more uh, bounce in the paper, if that makes sense. I'm going to put a little more paint on here. This is this color is just straight out of the tube. It's so bright. I really like the high chroma of color straight out of the tube. And flatten it out. I don't want it to be really thick in any area, especially if I'm going to start pressing it around. Because I really don't want to fill up my crevices of my vegetable. And you know, I uh, I compost most often, but my composter during the summer because we eat so much, so many vegetables gets full super fast and so this is kind of a nice way to utilize the leftovers. Okay, let's try this guy again. I think he's inked up pretty well. You can kind of see what it does right there now. Press him down again. And when you get a little area like that, it could be uneven um, areas on your vegetable. It could be the padding, which I assumed it was right off the bat, or it could be that your paint isn't thick enough. A brayer will help that. That's a little bit better, but I think it's the unevenness of the vegetable at this point. But at least now I have a rose print, so you can kind of see that. Um, the bok choy is a fun one because it really has a pretty shape to it. There's a leaf growing inside there. I'm going to pull that out and press it into my purple. And when I pick it up, I see it's not not picking up ink on that one side. So I may have to really pay attention to rocking that vegetable on that one side. I want to look and see which way a flower would be sitting. I'm going to print right below that. Press it down. I don't want to slide it at all, so I have to be kind of careful. Rock it around without sliding it on my paper. And then lift it off. Not bad. Not too bad. I could have used a little bit more pressing on that side, but... Okay, now let's try the um, the lettuce here because the lettuce is kind of fun. It makes a little bit of a, what looks to me like a uh, uh, carnation. I'm going to put that in the orange. I don't know if you can see me over here on the side of the screen playing in the orange with the lettuce. And lettuce typically prints pretty well. You're just using it like a paintbrush, basically. Okay. I'm going to come down here. I don't want to be off my screen, though. I want you to be able to see it. Right there. Once again, I'm going to rock this gently. Now, it's not as heavy of a vegetable. It's um, The leaves are far more fragile than bok choy and some of these others. So... That look at wonderful. That makes a really beautiful uh, carnation looking flower or a rose with a lot of a lot of petals. I'm going to turn this over so you can keep actually seeing me in the screen. Now I'm going to use this pepper. You could use this side but you wouldn't get too much. You'd have to cut um, the bottom of this and then you would not get a center attached to it. You would get the uh, the circles going around, right? I'm going to use the other side and this one's going to be tricky because there's not much to hold on to dropped myself in this sort of burnt orange color. Nope. And this one, remember, I didn't trim it. Um, it's been in my fridge for a day or two. So it's getting a little softer than... I don't want to keep it too many more days or then it's just going to get weird. You know, if you're making a huge batch of uh, vegetable soup or something like that, or marinara sauce, you probably could get a lot of vegetables all at one time and they'd all be fresh for this. Okay, I'm going to try to print it even though normally I would still be fussing with those areas a little bit. But it's going to make a pretty good flower. So, let's lay it down. I don't want to rock this one, I just have to press its little buttons here. Okay, so if I can pick it up without smearing it. Okay, and if you cut yours fresh, you're going to get a cleaner cut, uh, a cleaner print than that. But even so, it looks like a flower. Oop, and upside down it goes. At least it didn't land on my foot. Okay, so here I want to do this 
one that looks kind of like a, I don't know, like a peony or some sort of, and I'm going to go back to the red here just because I won't spend all my time mixing. But like I said, if you want to make a bouquet, you can really plan your colors and where you want to put all of these. Now this one, because it has so many tight, um, first of all, it's very uneven. And because it has such tight uh, leaves still in it, it, if I have paint that's too thick and mushy, it's just gonna go in between those and it's just gonna make a blob. So I have to, I'm not going to um, twist this one around in the paint a whole lot. I'm going to try and get fairly smooth even much easier with a brayer so use a brayer for this one in particular if you're going to start using vegetables that are tight like this this one is so uneven i don't think i'm going to get much of a print of some of the centers of that but now this is not just for vegetables you could do this with fruit citrus halved uh, or cut in half citrus makes really beautiful prints um, I've made flowers with strawberries and citrus. Cutting strawberries in half makes really beautiful petals. Hmm. And you get a little preview of what you're going to get. I would worry more about some of these areas that aren't totally inked up, but for the moment I'm going to show you what we get here. Rocking it around so that I can, this is, you know, I cut this um, day before yesterday, and so even though cabbage is fairly tough, it's softening up a little. It's rubbery. Okay, let's pull it off and see. Oh, not bad at all, right? It's just a kind of a fun little project that you can do. If you want, if you're making a bouquet, you could put down some green paint and, um, Simply come in with, this is dill, but you can use leaves from outside as well. And I'm just going to paint it into the color and plop it down. Oh, this smells good. I really like dill. I did not plant dill in my garden this year, but it receded from last year. And so I definitely had plenty of it. Now, if you don't like the way that it's laying, don't be afraid to be picky and, and brush it out the way you want it to be. And then lay it down. Okay. And then press it down a little bit with something clean, not your brush obviously, but. Um, and like I said, you can use leaves from your garden Oops, I was too pressed down because it's a little smushy, but I still like the print that I got from it. If your paint is not as thick as this, if you've got a really damp paint, it will just lay down and you'll get a really nice print off of it. Or you can throw it down. My paint is heavy enough that I can toss it down and still get some really interesting um, texture from it. If you have a leaf, you can just Press the leaf down in. Use the bottom side of the leaf and you'll get the, a better clarification of the uh, veins underneath. But that's just a little bit about printing with vegetables, making bouquets. Hope you have fun with this project and if you enjoyed this video please like my uh, YouTube channel and subscribe. Thanks for watching.